Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this question here is from one of the Test Your Understandings at the end of one of my lessons of P3 Chapter 2, uh, which is about the modulus function equations. And this particular question, um, I want to go through some in-depth explanation of it because there's some important points contained within this question. Now, when we want to solve a um, an equation involving the modulus function, then there are various ways that you can do, um, you can solve such equations. Um, and, you know, in order for us to really visualize the solutions, being able to sketch the equations of, uh, you know, the modulus function is something which will really help. So if we were to sketch the graph of y equals 2 minus the modulus of x plus 1, and also y equals the modulus of 4x minus 3, and we were to sketch them on the same diagram, then we would be able to see where this solu the, the solution to this equation will be. That's going to be where they intersect, where they're equal to each other, right? So now, um, sketching something like the modulus of 4x minus 3 is, is not something that's too difficult. Most of the students know how to do that. So if we were to, for example, draw our axes, Okay, so we've got our x and y axis. And if we were to first imagine drawing y equals 4x minus 3, as if there is no um, modulus sign, then we know that this would have a gradient of 4 and it would go through 3 on the y axis. You can say that when x equals 0, y equals negative 3, and when y equals 0, if y equals 0, you're going to have x equals um, 3 over 4. Okay, y equals 0, you're going to have 4x equals 3, and x equals 3 over 4. So it's going to go through the point negative 3 and 3 quarters, something like this. Okay, this is just a sketch, not an accurate diagram, so you just have to show the main places that it passes through. Okay, um, now, this graph would have looked like um, this if there's no modulus sign okay however with the modulus sign what happens is everything below the x-axis is reflected in the x-axis in the positive side so this going through negative 3 is now going to go through 3 so it's actually going to go from here and this way making this distinctive V-shape. And this part of it doesn't actually exist. It doesn't go that far down. Because everything below the x-axis, because the whole of the function is contained in the modulus sign, is now reflected in the x-axis. So that's the graph of y equals the modulus of 4x minus 3. And you can say this branch of this graph is as it is without the modulus sign. And this branch of the graph is as if you have replace the modulus sign with with a minus a bracket with a, a minus in front of it so that's going to give you minus 4x plus 3 or you can say 3 minus 4x and that's that that's this this is called the negative argument this is called the positive argument the positive argument being the part of the graph where if you just imagined the modulus sign as just being um a bracket with no you know just a positive sign in front of it and if the negative argument, the modulus sign is like a bracket with a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so that's the graph of y equals the modulus of 4x minus 3. Now, as for the graph of y equals 2 minus the modulus of x plus 1. Okay, if we were going to sketch this graph, there's a few th important points. Now, one of the ways we can do it, okay, is uh, we can, let's, let's look at the positive argument of this graph and see what equation it will have. So you can say when the positive argument of this graph is if, as if this is just a bracket and you keep everything inside it with the same sign. You don't change the sign of anything inside it. Okay, so for example, in the, modulus argument, the positive argument of this one, it's like you, have a, you just keep everything inside that, that, the same sign. But when you have the negative argument, anything inside the modulus sign changes its sign. You could think of it like that, I guess. That's probably a better way of describing it. So you have y equals 2 minus, and everything inside here changes, it keeps the same sign because it's a positive argument. So that stays the same. So when you simplify that, you're going to have y equals 2 minus x minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so you're left with 1 minus x. 
That's a positive argument. And the negative argument is when everything inside changes its sign. So it's going to be inside minus x and minus 1. Okay, it's the same as changing this to a plus, basically. Right, it's the same thing as changing this to a plus. So you'll end up with y equals 2 plus x and plus 1. So y is equal to um, x plus 3. So the positive argument of this graph would be the graph y equals 1 minus x. So it's going to go through 1. And it's going to go through 1 here as well. Let me just make it a bit more realistic. Okay, it's going to go through 1 on each of these. All right, so it would look something like this. Okay. Let's say that's a one there. And that's a positive argument, but this is not one where the whole of the the the, the whole of the um um the whole of the equation is inside the modular sign. Only part of it is so it's not gonna be something where you know it can't go below the x axis or y that won't be the boundary now. Okay, we also got to draw y equals x plus 3. If we draw the graph y equals x plus 3, well, that goes through negative 3 and positive 3. Okay, so it's going to go something like this. If we were to draw that, it will look something like this. Now, because, but I'll draw it the other way around. Let's say that's, that's negative 3 here. Now, because this has a negative sign in front of the modulus if it's a positive sign it will be up it will upright v if it's a negative sign it will be like be an upside down v okay because it's like um you know it's like a reflection in the y okay so y equals the modulus of x compared to y equals the negative the negative modulus of x is these two right so that means the v shape is going to be at this point here this is going to be at the point where they intersect, where the positive and negative argument intersect will be where the, where the V sign is. Okay, as we can see from here. So the V sign is going to be here. Instead of it having an upright V, it's going to be upside down V because it's got a minus in front of the sign. And one of the other important things for us to realize is the coordinates of the vertex. This is the vertex. Now, when you have something in this form, how can we work out the coordinates of the vertex? Well, we can use a very similar kind of idea to when we have a um, quadratic expression which is written in the form completing completed square form now in this particular case we can see that the highest that this the value of y can ever be is 2 because it's always to take away something and that thing that you're taking away is always going to be positive because any output from this is going to be positive when you have a, a modulus function all right Whatever goes in here comes out as positive. So it's going to be 2 minus something. It won't be 2 minus minus something. So 2 is the highest it will ever reach. And when will it, when it, when will it reach 2? When you're taking nothing away from it. Okay, when you're taking, when it's 2 minus 0, it will be at 2. Now, when is this going to be 0? When x equals negative 1. Okay, when x equals negative 1. So that is the point, the vertex, okay, of this um, equation it's going to be negative one on the x and two and you can see that you can derive these values straight away just by looking at this just like if it was a quadratic if it was like this we would say oh the vertex is negative one and two opposite of this same as that okay that's for quadratic that's where it would turn okay it'd be it would be a smile a frowny face turning at that point so this is a very similar type of situation because a modular sign kind of like like acts like squaring because anything inside it cannot be negative. Okay, so that's something important for us to realize. So that's the vertex. So that's something sometimes you are asked in an exam to find the vertex of this or find the maximum value of this and the x value at which it occurs. There are different ways they ask you that same question. So you have to be ready for that type of question there. And we can even show that this is the point where these two intersect where 1 minus x intersects with x plus 3. Okay, where do they intersect? We can solve this equation. We have 1 minus 2 equals 2x, so x equals minus 1. And when x equals minus 1, then y is equal to 1 minus minus 1, which is 2. So we can see that that's going to definitely be where they intersect. So you can see it from that point of view that that's the vertex. And also from the equation here, 
which is very important for us to realize the vertex is found okay by the x value that makes whatever's in the modulus sign zero and what and then when that is zero what's left on the outside okay so if you have y equals for example the modulus of, of 2x plus 3 modulus minus 4 then we can say the x value that makes this zero is going to be when x equals minus um, 3 over 2 if you put 3 over 2 in here because you know 2x plus 3 equals 0 x equals minus x equals 3 over 2 right and when y equals negative 4 so the coordinates of the vertex of something like this would be 3 over 2 and negative 4 for example right so that's something we need to realize when we are doing such questions okay so now we're going to actually go on to the solving all right i'm just um what, what i really wanted to illustrate here is not so much the solving but how to do a sketch of this type of graph okay and how to know where the vertex is all right so as, as we mentioned the important things to mention are the places where is this, this crosses at one as we mentioned where the places where something crosses the y-axis and the x-axis okay now um what we're going to say next was yes we want to find the two points where these intersect and we can see very clearly that we have this part of the graph which is y equals one minus x and this this is called the positive argument of the graph and the negative argument of the graph is when y equals x plus three so we can see very clearly that when they intersect okay with the graph here it's both of them intersecting with y equals one minus x so you're going to find two pop, pop, two solutions one is when three minus four x equals one minus x so you can say when 3 minus 4x is equal to 1 minus x. And the other point was going to be when um, 4x minus 3 is intersecting with um, 1 minus x. So when 4x minus 3 is intersecting with 1 minus x. That's what's going to give us our solution. So for here we have 3 minus 2, which is 2. And you're going to have a minus x plus 4x, which is 3x. So we have x equals 2 thirds. And here we have 4x plus x, which is 5x, equals 1 plus 3, which is 4. So x equals 4 over 5. So we can see that the values that we're looking for are somewhere less than 1, because this is where this hits the x-axis. Okay, and they're both on the positive side. They're both positive values. So those are our two solutions. So once we've sketched the graph and we know which branch is which, it's really easy to then solve such equations. Okay, so... Um, you know, that's what I would recommend for you in terms of methods of solving such equations, especially when part of the equation has a modular sign and the other part doesn't have it. And the other side is also like, you know, modulus with it as well. Then that's probably the easiest way. And as I mentioned in P3, they do ask you always to solve equations. Okay. Um, um, and sorry, they always ask you to sketch equation, sketch the equation of the modulus function. It's always ask for you to do nearly every time all right so you should know how to carry out sketching like this um and then using it to solve your equations makes life easier because if you try to do random things like let's try this with a minus in front of it and try this with a minus in front of it try this with a plus and try with you try all different random things you're going to get so many false solutions okay you'll end up with four solutions so that's why sometimes it's always you know wiser for you to just like, for example, if I continue this line here, well, I, I can see it doesn't go that far. But if I was to continue this line this way, there's two two full solutions right there, one here and one here, which you will get if you try to solve these in different combinations algebraically, trying, you know, negative, like, for example, if I did uh, x plus 3, okay, which is the negative argument of this with um, 4x minus 3, which is a positive argument of that, I would get this solution, which is not a true solution. It doesn't actually exist because this line doesn't go that far. This is just, you know, it stops there, all right? But according to this equation, it would it would continue, all right? So that's, you know, there's another one here as well. That's one and one, two solutions, one here. That doesn't get to that point, all right? This one does, that one doesn't, and so on. So you find that there's a number of solutions that are four solutions that are found when... Um, you don't think about the sketch. So sketching them, you can see with your eyes, the solutions are these two only. Where this branch of the graph meets the, where basically the negative and the positive arguments of this 
meet just the um, negative, the positive argument of this one. Okay, when that happens, then it, they they intersect. All right, so that's just a little side point for us. Um, some important points came out of this question that I wanted to make clear to my students. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Um, don't forget that other that in this playlist here, you will find other questions from P3, um, where uh, chapter two, where I have answered questions about P3 chapter two. Um, if you if you find that um, you know there's a question that you don't know in this chapter that you want me to go through um, and you don't find it in my playlist then tell me and I will try to add it there other questions in general from chapter 2 which is functions and graphs can be found over here and modulus functions in particular there's a playlist just for that over there you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon